Welcome to PhilChed Connect, a higher education open educational resource application. PhilChed Connect contains higher education materials which are useful for teaching, learning, and research purposes. It allows learners and educators to access content anytime, anywhere, free of charge. No registration needed. Just type in the keyword of the topic you wish to search. Click on the categories on the Philippine Standard Classification of Education and browse your way to its rich content. PhilChed Connect is easy to use. Just key in your area of interest. The site offers different relevant and interesting materials to choose from. Scholarly prepared, accomplished, and uploaded by competent faculty members and contributors from various partner Philippine higher education institutions. Guided by the principles of open educational resources, these materials such as PDF, audio files, ebooks, presentations, videos, and many more are very beneficial. Field Chat Connect. We educate as one.
Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending the 13th webinar of the Higher Education in the Context of Pangsamoro Organic Law, also known as the HECBOL Project of the Commission on Higher Education. This is in partnership with the Ministry of Basic, Higher, and Technical Education of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. We are broadcasted live via HECBOL Facebook page and YouTube channel. I am Gina Suro, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon. Our webinar is entitled Protecting the Health of your finances during the pandemic, a webinar for higher education institutions, teachers, and students. This webinar focuses on the financial impacts of COVID-19 to higher education stakeholders, such as the institution, faculty members, and of course, the students. Practical tips will also be provided later on on how to handle difficulties with personal finances, most especially during this time of pandemic. To formally begin our webinar, please help me welcome Director Nelia A. Alibin, Director 4 of the Higher Education in the Context of Pangsamoro Organic Law Project of the Commission on Higher Education. Thank you, Jean. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone, most especially to the presidents, heads, faculty members, and students in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, my colleagues in the Commission on Higher Education, and our partners from the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education, BARM, school officials and guests. It is my honor to once again welcome all of you to HECBOL Online. Welcome to our 13th webinar entitled, Protecting the Health of Your Finances During the Pandemic, a webinar for higher education institutions teachers, and students. This is part of CHED HECWAL Project's capability building activities for the higher education institutions in the country, most especially to the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. The webinar today focuses on finances and financial impacts. Times of crisis can bring uncertainty for many reasons, and the current coronavirus pandemic is no exception. Regardless of the current or coming health effects of COVID-19 on you or your family, the pandemic has affected and will likely to continue to affect household finances for years to come, especially on the cost of our children's education. Whether you have experienced a change in your financial situation because of layoffs, reduced hours or wages, or through increased medical expenses, it is important to stay to take stock of where you are and make a plan to ensure financial success now and in the future. Having a plan, prioritizing spending, and using resources efficiently will be key to your financial stability. These are unprecedented times, and although you may feel alone, everyone is affected by the current pandemic. Take steps to safeguard your physical, emotional, and financial health and reach out if you need assistance. For today, we are so blessed that our speaker for this afternoon is no other than Ms. Salve Duquito, a well-known financial advisor and the host of ANC News Channels on the Money. She's a very dear friend way back in college, UP days. A person that is strong-willed, very focused, and a hard worker, but still having fun while doing all of those stressful things. We had a great and beautiful memories together. Thank you, Ambe, for accepting our invitation. I know that you will be sharing to our dear teachers and students sound financial advices. So with that, let me express my gratitude on behalf of the Commission on Higher Education and of course the HECBOL Project. We hope that you continue to watch our webinars, follow our HECBOL FB page, and subscribe to our HECBOL YouTube channel for some updates about higher education, about CHED activities, and of course, other reminders. I express my sincere thanks to all the many individuals from CHED, the BARM Ministries Basic Higher and Technical Education, and to all our subscribers. Let us continue to contribute to the success of higher education. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Nelia. 
To those who just tuned in, welcome to Protecting the Health of Your Finances During the Pandemic, a webinar for higher education institutions, teachers, and students. The third, the thirteenth webinar of the HECBO project of the Commission on Higher Education. So, without further ado, here's an ABP to introduce our resource speaker for this afternoon. Wag po hahanapin yung accountability partner na kasama niyong gumastos. Hi, Welcome back to On The Mic. Still with us is property consultant Sheila Lugier. By a lot of people, na kahit na na-declare na siyang scam, hindi pa rin sila naniniwala because they were taught that it's money given to God. Sa so, form na nakakatakot, tapos sinian ka ng maraming IP. IP. Today, after taping, I will bring Seth to training and then I will wait for him to finish training and then I will pick him up and then I will go home. I have a term for you. Feisty. 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 So, so basically, because we're writing about to start never afraid to find God. Feisty. Feisty in a good way. I probably use the same word. Pero feisty and friendly depending on where you are within that spectrum. Kasi kahit kaibigan ka niya. She can also be feisty if she thinks you're doing the wrong things. Ayan, kaya siya. Ayan, kaya siya. Pero naman kung kami kaya mo sila for you. Talaga yung mga medyo may size issues. Talaga. Yeah, yung kaya niya. They make up for it. They make up for it. Sa mga, ano. So, very down. Really down. Kasi sa ligyan. Kasi T-Rex malaki. Praise <laughs> Pag sinabi nating 20 pesos per day, mahirap pa ba? Ma, mahirap talaga mag-ipon. Ang hirap na kausap, guys! Uwi na ako sa Manila! <laughs> Susuko ba? O gagawin pa din? Oy, may positive na siya na sinabi. Sambe is the one person, person that is uh, so amazing. Uh, whose name is uh, sounds prophetic because there's uh, only one letter of Sambe and, uh, and her name is associated with that passion and uh, it is savings. Uh, savings. Sambe, savings. She possesses uh, the unique combination of, uh, of passion and uh, intelligence and, uh, and uh, uh, determination to do something good, uh, particularly for uh, those who are in uh, what we call uh, fringes of society, uh, including uh, OFWs and uh, women's groups, as well as many other uh, groups uh, in our society. Selfless. Real. Velociraptor. Siga. Mas palera. Passion. Dedicate. So this is what you've all been waiting for. Salve the Pito has her own YouTube channel. So like, share, subscribe to her channel for financial literacy that actually works for all Filipinos. So hit that, hit that bell, hit that bell. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, uh, the the TV host and personality, journalist, teacher, financial advisor, and the mother, the dub financial beshi ng bayan. Please help me welcome Miss Salve Dupito.
Hi, hi, Jean. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to be with everybody today. As in, sobrang excited ako for this afternoon because sabi nga ni Nels kanina, we had a lot of memories together back in college. Tapos, uh, my parents, my siblings are school teachers. So, I really feel such a great connection. Plus, meron pang isa. I used to go to ARMM a lot when I was working on education advocacy, um, documenting a lot of beautiful teachers there in ARMM. Kaya I've met a lot of people and I know that you are great people. Very warm, very loving. Namiss ko na pumunta sa inyo. So, I'm uh, sorry, naka-off pala. <laughs> Ayan. So, I'm so, I'm so excited. Sabi ko nga kanina, talagang feeling ko reunion to. Just like when we first met, Jean, you remember, parang hindi yes, naman tayo magkakakilala personally, pero when we saw and met each other, sobrang saya. And so I'm really excited to talk to everyone today. Yes, ma'am. Actually, um, it's really exciting to to know that you are speaking for this afternoon, lalo na when it comes to personal finances, because we know that you are the financial guru, the the finance, the best, the finance best ng bayan. <laughs> Beshi ng bayan nga daw eh. Hindi ko alam kung paano naging ganon pero I'm happy if there's a, if that can help anyone out there kahit mag-isa lang sa lahat ng hundreds or uh, I don't know how many people will be watching the streaming video if there's just one person that I can help transform feeling ko sobrang worth it na tong hapon na to. Yes ma'am. Walang duda ma'am. You will be able to impact change to lives of many people this afternoon. So without mm -hmm. further ado, you may go ahead and proceed with your talk. Proceed okay, later. so thank you, Jean. Maraming salamat. I hope we can chat again later pagkatapos ko mag-present. Mag I just have a couple of slides and um, <clears throat> nung pinag-iisipan ko to, kailangan ko talagang sabihin sa inyo na this, these things, all of these slides were made in the context of ARMM and it is important because I know that sometimes you guys may feel marginalized. Um, so I want you to know from the very start that we care for you, that we understand that you also have things that you're going through. And this school year is such a very difficult year for everyone. So napaka importante na ayusin natin what we can and then just deal with the things that we cannot control. So, konting pagpapakilala lang. My mother, as I said earlier, is also a public school teacher. Um, nag, sa Albay naman siya, nagtuturo nung panahon na yun. I remember as a young girl going to this town. So, elementary school teacher siya. And my two siblings are high school. Uh, eto na pala yung nanay ko ngayon. Mahilig pa rin po siya sa bundok. <laughs> Kasi nasanay talaga kami na... Um, Mas mahili kami sa probinsya kesa sa city. But she now lives in in Canada with one of my sisters. Pero she really misses home a lot. Ang puso niya po nasa Pilipinas pa rin. Yung dalawang kapatid ko, they are they were high school teachers naman. And my this one who used to teach in Taguig here at high school uh, teacher, ngayon nagtuturo na sa college in a private school. Nag-retire na siya, tapos nagturo ulit. So what I really wanted to say was that now more than ever, as I say in this slide, teachers need to be in the best version of themselves. Alam ko na because of the pandemic, gusto na lang natin lahat kalimutan yung 2020, right? We want to just, sabi nga ng mga nakikita ko sa social media, we want to sleep. And wake up next year. <laughs> Kasi sobrang depressing. And in the context of um, schooling, napakahirap. This might be the most difficult school year we've ever had in our entire lifetime. And yes, gusto na lang natin siyang kalimutan. But as I said earlier, this is a chance to do something great. That instead of forgetting 2020, we can make this year something memorable, transformational, and something that will make us remember this year as the year when our students learn beyond the classroom, our students learn beyond the arithmetic and the grammar, 
and really learn about life, which is in fact what we need to be teaching them anyway. College is a time to prepare for the real life out there. And while today and this year might be one of the most difficult years we've had, we can turn this into a an opportunity. Because this year, our students are gripped with fear and a feeling of hopelessness. And you know how important the public, the school teachers are. Grabe yung impact ng teachers on the lives of students everywhere. And if we are able to prepare them for the future because they still come to school, this year then would have been a great success for all of us despite the difficulties that we face. One of these things that make it difficult for school teachers is, as we all know, lahat po naman tayo, lahat ng tao sa buong mundo, a big part of the trials and challenges that we face every day has to do with finances. So naisip ko lang, I know maybe, I'm not sure if you're aware that at this time, there are so many people on YouTube, on social media, na talagang binapadi, binabati ko sa mga teachers from elementary, high school, to college school teachers because they have to face their students via online and we don't really know who's, who's prepared for this. Nobody is. And we all have to learn, but there's so much criticism out there. So naisip ko lang na, you know, all of these criticisms, they don't make things easier for you. I think what's more important is that teachers deserve help, not hate. And one of the things that we can do for teachers to show that we love you and that we're, we want to help you is to teach you about financial literacy. Because I sincerely believe that if teachers do not have to worry about their future, do not have to worry about their finances, do not have to worry about even their own kids' education and tuition expenses, then you can face your students, whether it is in a blended learning uh, environment or whether it is via online or you just see them as you give them modules, then you will be able to face them with your most powerful game face on. So today's af in this afternoon, I will present to you some very, very basic but the, the most important part of planning your financial future. So that you don't have to worry about finances. Di ba parang ang sarap nun yung gumising ka ng isang umaga na wala kang pag-aalala about pera, wala kang pag-aalala. That doesn't mean that you're as rich as Ayala or Go Kong Wei, di ba? Pero at least wala kang inaalala na parang babagsak na lang sa'yo. So how do you do that? The first step really has something to do with fixing your financial future by looking at your visions. So... Alam mo na, mga teachers, mahilig kayo na kayo ang nag, nag humihingi ng sagot sa mga estudyante. This time, I will ask you a question and I hope you have a ball pen, paper, um, notebook beside you and I really want you right this very moment, answer this question for yourself. And this is true also of students and higher education institutions. There's something here for everybody. What are the things that are most important to you today? For students, what makes your heart sing? I know it's hard. I mean, when you're in college, you're really thinking about the future. Anong gagawin ko? And it's not impossible that you feel with a pandemic, what's going to happen to my life? There may be one year, two year, three years more before you go out into the real world. It's fear. It, I mean, it's scary out there. Yung mga tao nga na graduate na, natatakot tayo pa kaya. But students, this is the time for you to define your future. If you already define it, no one else will define it for you. And this question and your answer to this question will be the basis of your financial vision for your future. So think about it. What makes your heart sing? What makes you wake up in the morning ready to jump up and feel empowered and be able to empower others as well? For teachers... You are already, I hopefully, ha, you are already in the work that makes your heart sing. So when that happens, you're already in the profession of teaching. And you should be there because you love what you do. 
when you face your students, you're not thinking of being somewhere else. You're not thinking of being in a restaurant, owning a, or being a chef. You really are focused on the, the well-being of your students. So you know already what makes your heart sing. But what kind of life do you want to li live after you finish serving your students? Okay, so you have to define that. Whether or not this retirement is five years from now, whether or not it's next year, or whether or not it's 30 years from now, you need to define it or else others will define it for you. So um, after teaching, when you're 60 and you will be required to, li to leave the public school system, what do you want to do? Do you want to be in business? Do you want to continue teaching, maybe a consultancy? Do you want to completely retire and just travel the world? All of this, walang kopyahan. <laughs> diba? Kasi what works for you will not work for other people. That's why a financial strategy is very different between yours and the person next to you. What you need to do is very different from what he needs to do because your strategy should help you, not constrain you, should empower you to live the life you want to live. Akala po ng mga tao, pagkausap ang financial advisor, ang pag-uusapan natin, ano yung dap, hindi ko pwedeng gawin? In fact, pagkausap niyo po ang financial advisor, katulad ko, I help a lot of people in terms of their finances. The, the, what I really want people to think about is that by talking to a financial advisor, you are empowered to live the life you want to live. Hindi kita pipigilan, kundi I will let you fly. And I will try to find a way for you to achieve that kind of life that you want to live. This is true also of higher education institutions. This is not just for individuals. So as an institution, you always do planning. Diba? May events planning yan. In the beginning, maybe for two or three years, you've already planned out your calendars. What kind of events do you want to have in school? What kind of investments do you want to make? Expansions that you want to make? All of these things need to be detailed. All of these things need to be written down. That's why I want you to have a notebook and a pen beside you right now. Think about the things that you really want in the next five to ten years or maybe until you're 60 years old for private, for individuals, maybe until you're 60 years old for students, maybe until you are well into the midpoint of your life. So this is the first step and very, very important. Akala po ng mga tao, when we talk about finances, kaperahan, diretso na sa investments, diretso na, when we do that, without thinking of the kind of life that we want to live, we enter dangerous territory. Kung hi, yung lahat ng financial steps that you're making are not based on your goals and your time horizons, that can be very dangerous. So this is your first step. I hope you're taking down notes. Minsan po kasi, after that, um, a speaking engagement like this, your head is crammed full of information just like it as it is in your classrooms. And you forget some of the very important point. So, sana po nagno-notes po tayo. So, the next question that I really want you to ask, kanina, I let you fly, right? I let you think about the future. Walang constraints yan. Libre lang po mangarap. The second question, however, is what is stopping you today? For students, that may be your fear. For teachers, that may be your debt. Um, napaka... Wala pong judgment dito, but we all know that the reality is whether you're a teacher, an individual, or an institution, marami po tayong utang. And yung mga utang na yan, yan ang na, pumipigil sa atin. Para siyang bato na naka-angkla naka tayo sa bato, kaya hindi tayo makalipad. So we need to face that. For higher education institutions, aside from utang, there may be other barriers. Only you will know the answer. But what I'm telling you is this, if we don't face all of these things and we're trying to hide it be under the rug, we will never be able to be successful in the financial strategies that we wish to take. Kasi hidden yung mga fears na yan, hidden yung mga utang, 
kung ayaw nating harapin, whatever we're trying to do, we will always be held back. So what is the next question? Um, ako po, pwede po akong tumulong dun sa mga may problema sa utang. Hindi po para bayaran ko lahat ng utang. Ano? But I would like to share with you this debt payment push plan that I've designed for a lot of people. So, um, kunwari po meron kayong 30,000 pesos na utang and you know that the interest is very heavy. Sino po ba dito sa inyo? Like those who are listening to me via streaming or uh, in Facebook or in Zoom, Type down in the chat section, write down in the comment section. Would you like to be free of debt? Would you like to wake up every morning na wala kayong iisipin na maniningil sa inyo? Type down yes. Because you claim it. You claim that kind of future. You claim that kind of existence. Otherwise, you'll never get there. So your debt payment push plan is a very simple spreadsheet. And I know that I've already promised to send this out to everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do in my Facebook page, once I'm done redesigning this debt payment push plan, please like either Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube to get instruction on how to download a free Excel worksheet that you can use. Plug and play lang to. Maglalagay lang kayo ng numbers dyan. And then it will plan out for you kung anong gagawin nyo para mapabilis ang pagbayad sa utang. And this is a wonderful gift because maybe by Christmas time this year or maybe by Christmas time next year, maaalala ninyo ako because I want you to celebrate when finally, 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 you reach that existence na zero utang ka na. Okay, this is my free gift for everyone. So how do you use the debt payment push plan? This is simply kunwari, kunwari lang, 30,000 total utang. Pinaka malaking interest yung credit card. Pinaka susunod doon ang personal loan. And then maybe you have paluwagan and you're, you have utang with your sister. I know that when we are uh, in the, in the Bangsamoro uh, context, um, Muslims are not allowed really to borrow or earn money from interest. Pero I'm still aware of the reality that some still have debts. Maybe not from credit card, but let me just cite all of these as example. If this is the situation, what you really need to do lang is figure out how much, let's say, in one month, you can set aside 5000 as payment for all of these debts. Make sure that you retire just a little bit. For wag nyo pong tatakbuhan. Do not run away from your lenders because then your interest and your penalties will go higher and then you have reputational risk. What you really need to do is to make sure you pay them kahit na maliliit lang but all of them every month. So let's say for January... Uh, 2000 is set aside for credit cards, personal loans, 1500 paluwagan, 1000 sister, 500 kasi love ka naman ng sister mo. So total, you really have just a budget of 5000 every month. So in February, you do the same thing, and then by March, you do the same thing. By April, since 6000 lang ang utang mo sa credit card, tapos ka na. So paid na your credit card na 6,000 6, pesos, which means the 2,000 pesos you paid to your credit card can now be added to your personal loan. So instead na 1,500 lang, it became 3,500 for the month of April. This is the push. This is the push that I'm talking about. So now, 3,500 for personal loan, paluwagan 1,500, sister 500, 5,000 pa rin. Hindi ka nagdagdag at bawal magbawas until you pay off the entire thing. So by May, you would have paid your personal loan completely and then your paluwagan completely and that's a mistake. That should be 5,000 paid to your sister because you have still have a budget of 5,000, right? By June, you can continue paying 5,000 to your sister and guess what? By July, in only a matter of seven months, your 30,000 uh, utang 
is down to zero. Of course, this assumes na hindi na natin siya dadagdagan. Kasi when we're trying to retire debt at dadagdagan na, na naman natin siya, mas mahihirapan tayo to pay it in full. I have seen this, I promise, in the people that I mentor. And the moment they achieve their debt payment push plan success, the moment and the day, I I tell them, go buy something for yourself. <laughs> Basta wag ka lang babalik sa utang. Go enjoy it and enjoy that moment. Because each day that we are not paying compounding interest on, on loans is the day when we can really try to move forward in our journey for financial independence. Because really, pag wala na po tayong utang, we really have freedom of choice. Freedom of choice, what kind of life you want to live, ha, who can we help? Kasi paano tayo makakautang sa iba, kung, ah, makakatulong sa iba if we are also in debt? Dapat hindi ganun. So really, freedom from debt shows that we have a choice. Right? So, once you're done with the utang, let's talk about, so tapos na yun, di ba? Assuming that we already have zero debt right now. And I want you all today, those who are in stream, watching on streaming or in Zoom, show in the chat box some sort of celebratory emoji. Okay? And try to imagine right now how it would feel to have no consumer debts that you cannot pay. Diba? Uh, gusto ko, i-keep niyo yung feeling na yan in your heart because it will encourage you to do better with your finances just so you can reach that goal. After you reach that goal, it's now ready to start a savings plan. My question to students, to teachers, and even to higher education institutions, how much can you save today? Why is it very important to save? Because Wala pong tao na magsusurvive in this pandemic if we don't have a savings plan and if we don't have emergency funds because all of these things will ensure our survival. We don't know when the next pandemic will arrive. But we are very sure that uh, scorched earth scenarios are now getting closer and closer. Before, uh, just last night, I was in a conference uh, for it's a preview of a session of the economist with bill gates who is one of the people who has thought long and hard about um scenarios that will mean wiping out the entire world and protecting human race from ex extinction and the pandemic is one of them and he has said years and years ago that we have to be careful because something like this might happen but also climate change is another one of those things so that risk of something like this happening again will always be there and what i'm telling you is this this is the time to learn our lessons while we are in pain ang hirap umasa sa ayuda because we don't know when it will arrive unfortunately very few LGUs are very efficient when it comes to sending out help. So we need to help ourselves. And one of the ways to do that is to change our habits. Usually when we get our income, the first thing that we do is we spend it. Where do we bring our income? We pay it for food. We go to, to restaurants. We pay. We buy stuff, things that we won't need in 10 years. And what do we say to ourselves? Pag may matira, mag-iipon ako. Tama ba ako? I hope all of those who are listening can show me if you are ready to accept that this is reality. Can you chat there? This is this is the reality, Miss Salve. We accept that it is. You know what's going to change this is very, very simple. I don't want you to have to go through all of those difficult budgeting techniques that you will give up on after one or two days. The only thing that I really want you to remember is this. So kanina, I said income minus expenses equals savings. I want you to change just one thing. Shift nyo lang yung savings and expenses. So ngayon, what I want you to do is income 
minus savings equals expenses. Bago kayo magbayad ng kuryente, tubig, maggrocery, bago kayo mamigay sa mga, sa mga kamag-anak nyo ng pera, pagpasok ng sweldo nyo, the first thing that you will set aside is savings for the future you. This is not money that will disappear in the ether. This is money that you will spend when you can no longer work. This is not for somebody else. This is for you. Also for spending, pero hindi lang ngayon. So when this happens, then you will be able to set aside, I promise, kahit na 25 pesos per weekday lang. Alam niyo yung mga estudyante, magkano na ba yung, um, ma well, when you were going to school physically, magkano ba yung mga, uh, e ano tawag nito, allowance ng mga estudyante ngayon? I don't know anymore because my kids, well, my children don't have allowance. They're, some of them have 100 pesos. Just like my child who is gra who graduated already and is 25, she used to have 100 pesos allowance. Yung mga kapatid niya ngayon, 100 pesos pa rin. So let's say you have 100 pesos. Set aside 25 pesos per weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And before you know it, how much do you think you will have in one year? It's 6,000 pesos. Nothing to sneeze at nowadays. So, kahit na maliit na amount, and this is a trick that we financial advisors have, we annualize small amounts to see its real value. So, 25 pesos Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, kung gagawin mo yan ng isang buong taon, you will have 6,000 pesos in your piggy bank. Right? If you are able to raise that to 50 pesos, you will have 12,000 pesos. Hindi na po napupulot yan ngayon. Karamihan sa atin, uutangin pa yan. So that's one, one way to make sure that we have an emergency fund. We try to start with small amounts. Okay? Start with small amounts and then as your habit gets better, na parang it's like brushing your teeth or uh, going out of the house without taking a bath. Diba? You feel weird not being able to do it. If you feel that way about saving a little bit of your money every day, then something has changed inside of you. And then it will, I will ensure, I will guarantee you that you can raise that money a little bit and you will be able to survive the next crisis, the next pandemic, the next global difficulty that will come our way. Because no one will survive the pandemic without a runway. Okay? So, I said earlier, uulit-ulitin ko, bahala na magsawa kayo sa akin. Emergency funds are critical to your health. Now, after your zero debt, you already have emergency funds, that, that money in your emergency fund good for one year. Uh, yun po yung gold standard now with all of us financial advisors. If you want to be really secure about the future, you need to set aside money good for one year just in case you won't be able to work for one year, your, your family will eat. Your family will be able to survive. So kahit na paunti-unti, set aside as much as you can so that you have money for a one-year emergency. Now, once that's done, and you have a little extra, what do you do? Because inflation, I, I don't know if you know, you understand what inflation is. Uh, I'm not sure if in elementary or high school this has been taught, but we understand and we feel it. Your 100 pesos today is buying much less than what you were able to buy 5 or 10 years ago. Lagi sinasabi ng mga lolo natin, nung unang panahon, lumabas ako ng 500, ang dami ko nang nabili. Ngayon, yung 500 ko, ang giit-liit na lang. That's called inflation. And that means that as time goes on, your savings, without doing anything about it, whatever money that you've saved for the future, is shrinking because of inflation. So what you need to do is to invest your money and make it grow faster than inflation. Gusto ko sana meron akong whiteboard dito para it's really like a teaching moment, di ba? But I know that you get it. So that means no one will survive the future 
if we don't know how to invest. For students, this is the time for you to begin. Kasi why? There's a long time for you to be able to grow whatever savings you have. So dahil there's a long time, you don't have to save a lot of money just to have a lot of money in retirement. But teachers, because kung ngayon ka palang magsisimula, nabawasan na yung time na pwede mong palakihin through investments, yung retirement money mo, now you have to play a catch-up game. For higher education institutions, it is also critical to your vision. You owe it to your vision to begin investing for the future. After you're done paying off your debts, it's time to plan out. What do I need to do to grow all my resources so that I will be protected from further crisis in the future? So what are the options? Um, I've looked at the options for even for the, those that are Muslims. And I've spoken to some of one of my followers is a Muslim. And I've, I've interviewed her and I've had several interviews in my show in ANC on the money. And for students, it's great if you can set aside what maybe 500 pesos for an equity index fund every month. 500 pesos is this 25 pesos from Monday to Friday. That's already when you put them all together, it's like a little mound of wealth that can make you happier as you get older. So equity index funds is good for you. A little business on the side is good for you. And I know that you are very good at entrepreneurship. There are also what we call halal stocks. In the Philippine stock market, there are some options that have been certified to be halal because they don't make money from speculation, gambling. Um, they don't have a lot of debts. And all of those, you can invest in the stock market. And when you're young, this is the sweet spot because even just a little over time can really grow and give you that security that you want in your old, old age. So teachers who are a little bit older than students, you can put your money in bonds, uh, lalo na kung zero coupon bonds, so you're not earning from interest. You just get the return after the period when the uh, the the mat when it matures, and then you have halal stocks, equity index funds, and yay! Recently, nagkaroon ng first flotation ng what we call real estate investment trusts. And even in New York, Muslims are able to invest in REITs because they just, you make money from the rental income of existing buildings. Diba? So it's just like having your own rental income except that you don't have to set aside a lot of money for capital. Kasi makikisosyo ka lang dun sa mga tao na may rental income. So that's a great way to deepen the stock market and it's a very new one. So you might want to check that out. You can also buy properties and you can also have your small businesses. For higher education institutions, these are your options. So bonds, real assets like land, property, and equipment. And investing in people is a very important aspect of organizations, especially in the field of education. Um, and hopefully lang kasi when you invest in people and then they move somewhere else, you lose that investment. So when you take care of your people as well in the organization, you empower them, you train them, and you make them... Uh, you make their voices heard, then you can take advantage of the returns from that investment in people. So training, again, REITs, you can also do that, and equity index funds. I have actually um, come up with a short list of all the Sharia-compliant stocks in the local stock market today. You can take a picture of that um, as your notes. I'm sure you won't be able to copy all of that with your hand. So... Um, this is uh, my research that maybe can help all of you who are interested in investing in stocks. When I was looking at and doing research on halal investing, I realized a beautiful thing. Now, a lot of people think that it's you're just um, limiting your options because 
really the Quran wants to make sure that you are um, holy in the way that you invest. But really, when I looked at the way that, that the rules have been set, it is simply intelligent investing, which is precisely what I teach to all of those who follow me. Um, not follow, follow, huh? I'm not like a messiah or something like that. It's just, I'm, I meant by that, uh, the people who listen, like example, when I talk like this, no? Halal investing is simply intelligent investing. And if you follow its rules, then you are protected from huge losses. But if you don't do it as well, then you are not protected. If you don't do it, then there is no protection for you for when the next crisis comes along. I told you at the beginning of my talk that some of the best years of my professional life were spent in ARMM. I've been to Basilan, Sulu. I haven't been to Tawi-Tawi. I've been to Cotabato, Ganasi. I've been to many different places. I, and I love those places. And I love connecting with people in those places. And ito pong picture na to. This happened to me. I was the one, I don't know if it was my photographer who took this picture, but I was there documenting. This was an island of Siasi. I am not aware anymore which island was it. But we went to this island and I, I saw that there were no buildings for school. Pag naaalala ko all the hardship of grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4 students who study under the sky. Nung, alam niyo po sa totoo lang, when I was taking video, so my crew, I had a cameraman, I had lights man with me, and when I was taking videos of this school, na butas pa yung blackboard. And then I looked at the blackboard. The teacher just wrote Islamic values, saving money. Saving is putting aside something, especially money that can be used for emergencies. No kidding. She was like, this was more than 10 years ago, I think. Just like speaking to all of us today. And hindi po talaga ako makatuloy ng ginagawa ko because I was crying behind the camera. Because I looked at the blackboard and butas. So in my mind, education tries to empower and uplift the soul. But it is also constrained by finances. And we will not be able to advance the cause of educating the next generation if we are not able to empower our financial lives as well. The Prophet Muhammad warned that one who is prudent in spending will not be dependent on others later in life. This was another guy who uh, fell, uh, dropped out of school and kahit na siya na yung pinakamagaling na mekaniko doon, she, he started studying again um, through college. He started, I, I think he was already 35 when I met him and we persuaded him to go back to school and have a degree. And you know, education really changes a person's outlook on life and the way that it enhances dignity. Kaya po, I was thinking that even during the pandemic and that things are very difficult in the educational system, we owe it to today's generation to continue teaching. We owe it to them to continue opening our doors. Can you imagine having one year na walang engineers? One year na walang doktor? One year na wala tayong CPAs? Wala tayong accountants? Wala tayong financial advisors? This will be a lost year. And nothing can hurt our future as much as no learning done in a year's time. As I said earlier, education is as critical to the health of our nation just as face masks and a vaccine and hospital beds. This was one of the stories that really touched my heart because this lady uh, was teaching students. She walks for hours just to reach one student who has dropped out of school through the DepEd's ALS program. At bit-bit niya yung sarili niyang blackboard. Bit-bit niya yung sarili niyang upuan. 
And you know what I realized? This is the life of teachers, serving beyond the classroom, giving your entire life's resources to be able to connect with one child, to be able to connect with one student, and hopefully to change their lives. Sometimes the people of this world think we need to get our money's worth from all of these educational institutions. Yung mga binabayad kong tuition, mga binabayad kong fees, we need to get our money's worth. But you know what? The, the things that teachers give to their students, they cannot be bought with money because this is beyond what money can buy. It is very important that we understand the value of education. This was me in college. I don't know, I know, I don't know, Nels, if you can <laughs> identify which I am. Um, these are my three best friends to the left side of the screen, and I was on the right side. And as I was talking earlier about the value of education, kung pong mahina ang loob namin, and I know, Nels, you know this, if we were not strong enough in our belief in the power of education, we would have quit. Life was really hard. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was born to a very poor family. One of Nell's best friends is my very good sister who now lives in Canada where my mom lives. And we studied apart. She was in Los Baños, UPLB, and I was in UP Diliman, where people were much more social. They had cars, they had, you know, they were speaking English. So in this picture, I had no money. And my three best friends, bless their heart, would always share their lunch with me. We would eat, if you can see, Dadalawa lang po yata ang ulam dyan. And we would eat in one plate. And to this day, we always talk about it. this thing. All of three of them are very, very successful now. And we now look back at that. Education was worth it. It was very difficult to finish schooling. It was very difficult to stay focused on the things that you need to do. On feeding, because you can't feed your body, you were just feeding your mind. But it was all worth it. And the transformation from there to here is now the blessing that I can also give back to anyone who would like to listen to me. Na everything that I've learned, I want to give to everyone for free. Anything that I've understood, anything, any skill that I have obtained because I've studied, because I've finished schooling, because... I've spin finished schooling with excellence. It's something that I can now share with each one of you who's listening to me today. I always speak about money, but I always say at the end that money is never the most important thing. But knowing how to handle it does allow us to do the things that are most important in life. And what is that? It's serving our community, it's serving our countrymen, our family, our friends, and it's being the best that we can be so that we can be, our, we leave a better footprint on this life and we leave a better world than we found it. If you have been uh, enlightened in any way or is there some more questions that you want answered, you want your learning to continue, I very much suggest the only thing that I will ask is for you to follow my social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. It's We just recently launched it, and I would really love to see you there on YouTube. Um, we are creating a lot of materials that teachers can use to teach financial literacy also. You can just play it from YouTube. You can have it for free. We're not going to charge you, but we have just started. So the more subscribers that we can get, the more empowered also our channel will be. So that's my only wish from you today is to follow. It's all Salve Says. Um, the, uh, the, you can search for it by looking for at Salve Says, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
And maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong mga nakinig sa akin today. Some of you have been listening to me paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit. Hindi kayo nagsasawa and you keep on sending me messages that are so touching. And you know what I'm, I want is to claim for you the life that you want. A life maybe not of huge wealth, but wealth that is good enough so that you can be helpful also to other people around you. Maraming maraming salamat. Keep on learning because your brain keeps expanding. Thank you so much. Ayan, nandiyan na si Jean. Jean, audio. Hello. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Ms. Calder, for that very informative, insightful, and personal, actually, um, talk that you had this afternoon. I'm sure our viewers uh, have learned a lot from you and, of course, your personal experiences. Thank you very much, Po. Maraming salamat. It was my pleasure, Jean. Pasensya na kung medyo iyakin ako. <laughs> Pero... <laughs> Everything is personal to me. And especially when I speak with students, teachers, and my favorite, ARMM. <laughs> so, alam mo na kung bakit very emotional. So, maraming maraming salamat to everyone who listened. Jean, are you there? Yes. Uh, actually, the, the internet connection is intermittent. Um, we also have some participants on Zoom. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they were able to pick up the the gist of the talk because uh, the connection in Zoom also is intermittent. But mm. we'll try to go to them uh, in a little while. Um, no problem. Yes, uh, on that note, we'll proceed with the second part of the program, which is the question and answer portion. Um, I would like to ask you, Ms. Sabe, first uh, a very slightly personal question. Uh, <laughs> in your lifetime, what do you think is the 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 most difficult thing that you had to handle financially wow the <laughs> most difficult thing <laughs> this is um uh, <laughs> ang ganda naman ng question mo jean so when i was in college kukuwento ko na yung story that we I, that i had with nels so my sister si fe kaming dalawa yung magkasunod and at the time that we were in college, ikaw, Jean, magpapaiyak ka. <laughs> at the time when we were in college, that was the time, because I was the youngest and second to the youngest, si Fe, that was the time that my mom left. She retired from being a public school teacher and moved to the U.S. So, tagutom po talaga. Like that, that picture, <laughs> it reminds me of the things in the past and why I must always keep my feet on the ground. So there was one time in the dormitory when I uh, I was so depressed because I had no money. I think I had no money at all. Um, there were things that we had to buy for school that I couldn't buy. Walang bawal po maglaba sa UP Diliman. So kailangan mo pang magbayad ng labandera or else wala ka nang susuotin. So many things that are very difficult. And so I text, uh, I think I called my sister. Wala pang cellphone noon. So I called the landline and told her na wala na akong money. And you know, the next day while I was in school, um, she came. She came, but I wasn't in the dorm. I was still in school. So she wrote a note. Meron siyang maliit jean na ano, maliit na papel. Tapos naglagay siya ng dalawang daan. Doon sa papel, naglagay siya ng note doon na wala din daw siyang pera pero nakahanap siya ng dalawang daan. So hinatid niya from Los Baños to Diliman. And then, nilagay niya doon sa papel and then nilagay niya doon lang sa rack. <laughs> Parang sinabit niya lang doon sa rack. And then when I got home to the dorm and I saw her note and didn't see her, she had to leave and go back to, to Los Angeles. I saw the 200 pesos and to this day, I kept that note and I tell my sister all the time that I still have it as a reminder. Now, when things are very difficult financially, you realize that your greatest wealth are people, not things. 
uh, there's always hope so long as there is family around you. You have friends who help you. Uh, they are your greatest treasures. And money will come. You have to believe that. Money will come so long as you are patient, so long as you are hardworking, so long as you're willing to do what it takes, money will come. Pero never give up people for money. I hope that helps, Jean. Grabe ka. <laughs> Sorry, yung pangbungad na question. Pero actually, sabi tama ka talaga na yung yung mga tao sa buhay natin, lalo na those who helped us when we were in need the most, these are the people who will keep us grounded like for a lifetime. And I can also attest to that. Uh, thank you for sharing your personal experiences. Po. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry po na paluha kayo. <laughs> okay lang, okay lang. Masarap naman maalala yung mga bagay na yon. One of those moments pa nga is when I go to Los Baños naman to visit them. Kami ni yeah. Nels, naganap kami ng kamote. Mm-hmm ng kamote tap sa likod ng dorm nila. <laughs> Pang ulam na po yun. So, alam mo, there's also a lesson here. There's a financial lesson here. So long as you're willing to live a simple life, saving money for the future is not that hard. Yeah. ba? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very well said, ma'am. Um, we have here one question. Uh, segue lang uh, from Facebook. Uh, from Miss Jennifer Garcia. Let's say you have small savings and you want to invest. Uh, should it be for long-term or short-term investment? Uh, what do you suggest? And is mutual funds more safe? Yeah, napakagandang katanungan. Because I didn't have time to go into that today. So I was going to um, ask all of you to just follow me on, on social media so that you can have more access to investment tips. In the market today, in the United States, grabe, the bear market is over. The, the stock market is raging. And what happens is people are excited and greedy. And usually when people are greedy, that's when they lose a lot of money. So if you are just beginning, and to begin, you have to make sure that wala kang utang, that you have emergency funds good for one year. Otherwise, I will not allow you to put money in the stock market. You need insurance. Okay, you need insurance, especially if someone is dependent on you. Kunwari, anak na kailangan pang mag-aral, kung mamatay ka bukas, you don't want your child to stop their schooling. So you need insurance. If nobody is dependent on you, like a parent or a spouse or a, or a child, it's okay to skip that part. But then you can go into investing. There are many, many different forms. Like, in the presentation that I showed you earlier, there are index funds. Ang dami, my REITs, my mutual funds, my stocks, my bonds, properties. So many different ways that you can earn your money. This is my statement for today. When you're just starting, choosing the what is not as important as committing to the how often. So long as you study and choose one instrument, where you will not have the risk of losing everything that you have. Kahit na isa lang yun, ang pinakang recommendation ko is a low-cost index fund. You will need time to study investing in stocks. You will need a lot more time to, in, to invest in bonds. But an index fund is like a collection of all the best stocks in the country. So with 1,000 pesos, mas mahal pa po ang cellphone natin kesa sa saving for a future. 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000, you can start putting money in the stock market through low-cost index funds. And forget about it. Don't trade it. Don't go in and out. Like when the market drops, gusto mo i-withdraw. When you do that, you lose a lot of money. When you're investing in low-cost index funds, these are the things that are structured to last you for 10, 20, 30 years and make you money over the long term. Ang kailangan lang dito, a lot of patience, okay? A lot of control because when you're losing money, Jean, parang gusto mong i-withdraw lahat, di ba? Kaso ang problema mo, pag withdraw mo lahat, Tapos nagsimula na umakyat, hindi ka na makabalik. So, uh, that's my recommendation. If you've 
covered everything from debt to emergency fund to insurance. You're ready to invest. You want to go slowly and be committed to your investment plan. Don't change your investment plan just because the market is dropping or rising. Just keep on following it with discipline. I hope that helps, Jean. Okay, wala tayong audio. Yes, all right. Um, thank you for your answer for Ms. Halde. And since you've mentioned about investment plans, just a follow-up question. Um, for those who have no experience, prior experience in investing, do you suggest that they hire an investment manager or a fund manager for that case? Um, when you are investing in a low-cost index fund, you're essentially uh, paying a low fee for the manager already of that fund. That's why nga ayoko nang nag-in and out kasi um, kaya ka nga nagbabayad ng maliit na fee kasi they will be in charge of going in and out of the market for you. But because it's an index fund, they don't really do that. They just follow the index, try to mimic it as close as they can. That's why your fees are very low. But if you're going into an equity mutual fund, for instance, or a bond or a bond fund, you will pay a management fee of maybe 1, 1.5 to 2% per year. That fee goes already to your money manager. Okay, so that, that's the way it goes. For very rich people who do not want to go into that and want to do a more customized investment plan, they really hire an investment manager. no? And their in investment manager is the one who recommends to them, okay, ilang percent ng pera mo ilagay natin sa stocks, ilan ilagay natin sa bonds, sa property, so they take care of the entire portfolio. That's how a money manager works. Thank you, Ms. Salve. Uh, earlier in your talk, while the, uh, I just have to interject this question while waiting for the questions to go online. Um, you, I mean, you made mention earlier that once you receive your salary or your allowance for students, ibawas na kaagad yung savings. Yes. Uh, what is your suggestion for those who have targets on a daily basis, let's say 20 pesos per day, how how would you um, encourage them to really deduct first the savings ng buo? Kasi mm -hmm. for most people, ay, for example, 6,000 per month yung target. Tapos pagdating ng sahod, digang, Ang laki naman ng 6,000, baka pwede nito na lang i-raise alkansa. That's true, Jean. No. <laughs> that could also be one of their um, mindsets. Eh. So yeah. what can you suggest to, the, to them? That's a great, great question. I love that you asked that question. You know why? There's a very easy way. Um, I'm not sure lang though if you're allowed to have money in banks. Pero if not, maybe cooperatives. I don't know. Um, I know that a lot of Muslims put their money in the house and that's difficult because you have to do the envelope system okay let's do two ways if you're allowed to put money in a cooperative or some organization that can save your money for you allow the institution to separate immediately as soon as your income arrives kunwari pumasok sa isang bank account yung income mo the bank immediately saves it in a different account for you so it's called automatic save up. That means you don't even need discipline because the bank will do it for you. So before you know it, hindi mo na siya nakikita. Tinatanggal na siya ng banko para sa iyo. So mas, you will be surprised that after 5 months, 6 months, 1 year, your savings have grown without you doing anything. So this is the perfect way for me. And this is how I have helped a lot of people raise their savings, even though they tell me, gastador talaga ako. Hindi ako nakakapagtigil. Basta may nakita akong pera, ubus agad yan. Sabi ko, I don't care. You can still save money. You just use the banking system for that. Hopefully, if you are mon if your money is in cooperatives or some other institutions, na Sharia compliant, that is also something that they can think about for you. But in the house, if you are keeping your money in the household, let's say you have um, a sideline, a side business, and I know you're very entrepreneurial, pagpasok ng kita, envelope system agad. 
Right? So, tabi-tabi na, meron ka ng envelope na pang savings. Pagpasok ng full amount, tabi na agad yung, yung let's say, 6,000 pesos for the month. Or 3,000 pesos kung every 15 days. I know, sorry. 6,000 for the year pala yon. Let's say, 500. Magtabi na agad dun sa savings. Tapos yung iba, tsaka mo na uh, i-budget for all the other expenses. Basta, yun ang dapat na uuna. Pay yourself first, ang tawag doon. Yes. Uh, just a follow-up question, so do you suggest that they diversify within uh, they, um, different bank accounts for different purposes in one bank or mm -hmm. different accounts in different banks for different purposes? What very good question. Okay, this is the um, very intelligent question. This is a um, shortcut to managing your finances. Create different bank accounts for different savings goals. So tuition, for instance. Let's say you have four children and each child, uh, let's say you have five children. Kunwari lang ha, you have five children and each child tagsasampung gibo kada taon ang tuition. What I want you to do is to pay the annual fee instead of the monthly fee. Uh, sorry for the institutions in here who will earn more money if, <laughs> if parents pay the monthly fee. Pero makakatipid po kayo if you pay the annual fee. But how do you set that up? So if you have different accounts in, within a bank, hiwa-hiwala yung tuition, hiwala yung uh, house maintenance, hiwala yung car maintenance let's say you have three cars and maintaining each car is like 60,000 pesos per year so you need to set aside money for each of those savings goals every time your money comes in first goes to your savings and then the rest is automatically set aside also for each one of those savings goals and this is the beauty of this because you will never wake up in the morning and worry about how much you need to how much money you need pa for tuition of all your children because by the time tuition fee payment season comes along naka set aside ka na for 12 months for the past 12 months automatic nang nagde-deduct for that account so pag magbabayad ka na all you need to do is just withdraw di ba so very easy and that's a very good question so that more people can take advantage of the system now in the financial world. Yes, I totally agree with you, Ms. Halde. And it's also a practical tip, of course, as well. As well uh, because it, once, for example, your payroll um, bank account is just mm -hmm. the only account that you have, then every time I withdraw, you may think that, ah, okay, I'm going to pay my amount. And then, first, <laughs> and then ah, okay, I'm going to pay my amount. Until it's over. At the end That's of the day, right. that, <laughs> so, it's so tempting because you don't know which ones of those are already committed for a future spending. Yeah. That's why when you set aside already, it's very quickly when you look at your accounts in the bank, you already know, ah, nakakapag-set aside ako para dito. You gain some sort of peace inside you, diba? Now, whatever it is that remains in your expense account is something that you can spend without guilt. Diba? Ang sarap nun. You can spend it without guilt kasi naset aside mo na yung mga important parts in life. Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Salve. Um, Since you mentioned earlier about children, I think the the question na pinakainaantay ng mga magulang ngayon at ng mga anak, do you <laughs> suggest that they still receive allowances even though that it's an online class or flexible learning nowadays given the effects of pandemic? Very good question, ha? Pe uh, I think for today, ang hirap kasi turuan ng mga anak natin kung paano mag-budget if they don't have money to budget. Pero, so, a lot of people swear by giving their children allowances and then showing their children how to budget that allowance. Well, they now just stay in the house. So, if... Uh, but the learnings on budgeting and all of that is still there. Kasi people still go to Shopee Lazada to, to buy things or order from their friends. So it's a learning tool. Pero alam mo, Jean, in our household, um, lalo na with my eldest, I do not give allowance. Nung mga panahon na yun, I wanted to approximate 
the reality of when they start working. Kasi in reality, in real life, you only get money if you work for it. So bakit hindi natin sila i-train habang bata pa sila na they have to work for their money? So upstairs in my in in my bedroom, there's a whiteboard and then there are lists. There's a list of all the household chores that they can do and they can get paid for it. <laughs> so kunwari, gusto nilang kumita, gusto nila ng extra ng money nila para to buy things na hindi na nila sa akin ipapaalam, they can wash the car or they can clean the common areas. Of course, their private areas, yung sarili nilang room, they clean that without getting paid because that's their obligation. That's their responsibility. But common areas, then they can do it with pay. And that's a great way, I think, to teach our children about money. Yes, exactly, Ms. Alba. Ika nga nila, um, if they carry their own bucket, they will appreciate every single drop of water. Very good. Very good. But we have a question from Facebook from Florian De Leon. Uh, good afternoon, mm-hmm. ma'am. Is it okay to invest your savings on bank money market? Yes, it is. Pero ang money market mostly, personally, I use it to help earn a little extra for emergency funds. It doesn't earn so much money. So I see it as savings lang, not so much investment. Pero so long as your bank is strong and it's safe, you can put your money there to earn a little more than a uh, plain vanilla savings deposit account. Thank you, Salve. Uh, I have a question, uh, a hypothetical question. For example, uh, there is a couple, a married couple. Do you suggest that they pool all of their income or leave first for themselves and saka na pool Single ka pa ba, Jean? Yes. <laughs> Ayan. So, um, sabi nila, a marriage is coming together of two different people. And I think, I don't want to judge those people who keep accounts separate, but it just goes to show your commitment in a relationship when you pull everything together. When you pull everything together kasi, you're more empowering. Like, there's no partner who feels less compared with the other person because you have a a common pool. And ev- what's, <laughs> dapat talaga, eh, pero lagi nga naman nilang sinasabi eh, yung mga lalaki, di ba? What's mine is yours and what's yours is yours. <laughs> so, we... Usually, lalo na when women work at home or we have a little business lang and the husband is the one who earns more, the women do a lot of work inside the household and yet they are the ones who don't have an allowance. Diva, The only one who gets an allowance is the person who works outside the home. And I think that's really, really disadvantageous to women. And it's important that we show women equal respect as the kind of regard that we show our breadwinners. Because remember, the most difficult job is still the job done inside the household. So we, the women deserve as much allowance, as much leeway as the person who earns who is the breadwinner and works outside the home. So again, pulling pulling the money together and then but I have a little advice. So you pull the money together, but each one of you should have a different account that that you can spend with money that you can spend for yourself. So that you will not feel bad about asking your partner for money. Dapat you have allowances that transfer automatically to your separate accounts. And then you can spend that on whatever. Diba? And beyond that, that's when you have to discuss before you get money from the common account. Even things that you need to help your own family should be something that is discussed by both parties. 
No, we don't want our partner to go sneaking behind our backs and just to send money to a family member who is in trouble. Because these things, secrets have a way of changing the energy within within a relationship. And lalo na financial secrets. So that's why it's better to have pooled money. Thank you very much, Miss Abby. Very well said. Um, to add, in terms of financial planning, do we? How, what's the extent uh, of the involvement of children? Do we only include them in goal setting, or also with when times get rough when there's a financial problem? Ganda ng tanong mo, and I think culturally, Filipino parents want to shield their children as much as possible. But when we do that, we also shield them away from the learnings that we can give them when the tough times come. Kailan pa natin sila tuturuan, di ba? Pag wala na tayo, hindi na natin magagawa yun. So we include them in all the discussions. And let's not worry too much about um, them not being able to take the pressure from all the financial. Let's say the, the breadwinner lost, lost their job. And this is a common problem now in the Philippines because of the pandemic and what's happening to our economy today. Bring the entire family together. And that is an occasion for you to talk about the reality as well as to gain strength in each other. These are the times when, as I said, human beings learn best when we are in pain. So let's all be in pain together so that it's easier for us to be happy together as well. Yes, very, very true, Miss Alve. Um, with regards, uh, going to another topic, uh, how do you feel about credit cards? Are they <laughs> necessary? <laughs> Are they necessary for being financially free or for, for, you, for one to say that I have arrived? <laughs> Is it necessary? <laughs> oh, that's a great question also. Alam mo, Credit cards are a great financial tool. Pero they're like knives. You don't give them to one-year-olds. Right? And being... Uh, how, do you, how do you know if financially you're a one-year-old or you're a 12-year-old or you're a 20-year-old? It's not age. It's maturity when it comes to handling money. So kung hirap ka mag... Hirap ka mag-budget and you don't... You, you cannot stop yourself from buying even if you know that you don't have the money to pay for it. Then you're a financial one-year-old and you don't deserve a credit card. But if you understand that you need to pay, this is not free money. Credit card is not free money. Every time you swipe, it's very convenient, lalo na ngayon, online orders, everybody. You cannot... Buti na lang, there's GCash, PayMaya, and other payment procedures. But for those who have credit cards, it's so much easier to travel. It's so much easier to even pay tuition using your credit cards. Um, large amounts, um, regular money transfers can be done using a credit card. And you don't have to uh, give out your bank accounts to other people. Instead, you can just pay using your credit card so now what happens is if you are very mature like you're an adult a financial adult because you know how to handle your credit card you can take advantage of all the convenience without paying all the compounded interest how do you do that by the time due date arrives now listen to this and this is very important by the time due date arrives pay every single peso in your bill do not do the minimum payment due that's the best way to make yourself ill financially bankruptcy ang maka dun tayo dadating if minimum payment due lang lagi you pay in full that's the opposite of your minimum payment due you pay in full all the time so that you don't get charged interest but when you do pay in full, the next moment you swipe, even though you don't have to pay for it in cash, you get the convenience of getting an item without losing the money at the same time. So credit cards are great financial tools, but do 
only if you know how to discipline yourself. Thank you, Ms. Salve. And just to follow up question regarding credit cards, what if they get um, they experience fraud, fraudulent uh, transactions using their credit cards? I know. Uh -huh. um, I I think I, I don't. I'm not the only one who have experienced it. I, I think a lot of us Ooh. did. So, um, what's the first thing that someone should do when they find out that they're a victim of credit card transaction, fraudulent credit card? Uh, right. What you want to do really is to prepare yourself now. Okay, prepare yourself now for the possibility that it can happen because it can happen to anyone. No matter how your how strict you are with efforts to make sure that your credit card details are never given to bad people, sometimes it still happens, diba? So what do you do? You have to make sure that you have your credit card details with you at all times in a separate, um, maybe in your phone, like if you have an app and take advantage of the photo, just take a picture of the front and back of your credit cards and make sure that it's there with you at all times just in case you lose the credit card or somebody uses the credit card and you don't have it with you, you can immediately call the uh, trunk line or call the, what do you call that? The customer service hotline and you can report the loss or you can immediately report the fraudulent transaction because you have the details with you. Second is, make sure that you constantly monitor your transactions. Some of us, it's just something shiny in our wallet and we remember it only when we don't have it. Diba? Part, of, um, part of the responsibility of owning a credit card is to make sure that every week at least or every night, you check what the charges are. Because sometimes, you only find out a week after that's too late already. You need to report it immediately to the bank if you want the charges to be reversed. Because they will need all your information to prove that you weren't the one who swiped this card in uh, India, in Bangalore, or in, in Europe because you're in the Philippines. But you know, if sometimes you discover all of these transactions after one week, you don't know anymore where you've been, diba? So it's hard now for you to show the bank the timeline so that you can prove to them that you're not the one and these are fraudulent transactions. So owning a credit card requires a lot of risk. It's a, you have to be responsible for it as well. Thank you very much, Ms. Salve. Actually, my the fraudulent transaction with my card was in the U.S., so it was a bit oh, easy no. that I was not the one who did the transaction. <laughs> the transaction. Uh, thank you very much for answering that question. Uh, we have another one from Facebook from Ralph Frey Pahinado. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend students invest their extra money or savings into the stock market? Also, what are the best ways or channels to learn about it? Oh, syempre naman, the best ways or channels to learn it is in Salvis's YouTube channel. <laughs> uh -oh. We will be uploading more information on stock market investing. There are also, I have other friends who are also in YouTube. You can learn from them as well. There's um, Rex Mendoza on YouTube, Randall Chongson, Marvin Guillermo. Um, Call Financial's YouTube channels are also very helpful. Uh, you can also follow uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I always give out uh, tips. Now, students, very interesting question. This is the perfect time, actually, because if you make a mistake, you have a long time to recover from your mistakes. And it's for sure we will all make mistakes when we invest. We won't get it right all the time. That's why it's fun for kids to start while young because your mistakes will not cost you as much as somebody who is nearing retirement and cannot afford any more mistakes, right? So use this time to learn. Um, you have 5,000 pesos, 10,000 pesos, binigay ng lolo. I mean, you've served, or you have... Um, you have done extra work and earned some money, put this aside in a stock market investing. Um, but first, study hard. Always understand the company. Don't buy it just because the price is going up. And don't sell it just because the price is going down. 
that's a sure way of losing money in the stock market. And it's funny because people think that's the only way to do it. It's the worst way to do it. What you want to do is understand the company, understand its products, understand the industry where it is, how it makes profit, whether the people managing it are good people, they're efficient, and they will not uh, be bad to the rights of the shareholders. If the sales team is great, and if it is doing enough for research and development, if all of these things are check marks, just buy and buy and buy. Siguro, if you can buy every month or every other month, it's a great way to learn. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Ms. Albert. Actually, the question actually brings me back to when I was in college as a finance major because we were required to open a, call, a COL account. Uh, we were asked mm. to trade stocks actually in one of our subjects called portfolio management. So it's nice. very interesting and very, um, I, I, I totally agree with you that we recommend for, for students, for college students to really try and invest right now in not only in stock market, but also in other financial um, instruments. Mm -hmm. okay. It's also very empowering, I think, for them. Yes. You know, because sometimes in your first job, for instance, for the college students who are listening to me today, it's empowering when you have an emergency fund or an investment fund. Because when you are in your first or second job and you are constrained, if you're forced to stay in it just because you don't have money, you won't enjoy your job at all. But here's what I discovered. If you have savings, if you have an investment fund, people tend to stay longer in their jobs because they are there not because they need their paycheck, but because they see some value in the things that they're learning from that company. So, alam mo yung the things that you're doing personally also has an effect on the beauty of the organization as a whole. So, very much recommended for students to start. And as you begin, like your first paycheck, make sure that you add to your investment fund when you receive your first paycheck. Ang budget nyo for your first paycheck is this. Something for your future and something for your parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Salvi, for answering that question. Uh, we have another one from Angela Avila. Uh, I already have a life insurance uh, with investments. Uh, do I also need to invest directly in stock market if I have extra budget? Wow, very, very smart questions. Okay. You, so I assume that somebody else is dependent on you. Maybe you have a child, um, a parent who is dependent on you, such that if something happens to you today, they won't be able to, their lives will be constrained. The child won't be able to uh, pay for tuition expenses. The parents will ha not have money for their medical expenses. That's the main reason why you want to buy an insurance. An insurance with investments is great because it comes with an investment advisor or financial advisor who makes sure that you don't eat all your money in one month. <laughs> your investment advisor, the part of their service is making sure that your financial plan is on track. Uh, so I would rather that a person has life insurance with investments um, and and pay the commission for all of these financial advisors than go for term insurance but forget to pay. No? Uh, that's even more dangerous. I'd rather you pay for the services of that uh, life insurance agent than lose all your money in shopping, right? Now, if you have extra money, just like you said in your question, and you feel that you have the time and inclination to research, like be a financial detective so that you understand what this company is doing, where its profit margins will go in the next five to 10 years. By all means, add to your portfolio by buying individual stocks in the stock market. Start small. Do it slowly. Don't go into it, again, like I said before, just because all your friends are going into it or nadala ka lang kasi may chismis daw. Okay, those are speculative investments. And I promise you, if you just speculate in the market, you will speculate yourself to death. 
always go for intelligent investing. And if you can't do it because hindi ka finance major like Jean here, let's say you're an art major or you're, a, um, I don't know, education major, di ba? No? Na malayo sa math, malayo sa finance. And you don't have the inclination to study annual reports or financial statements. Okay lang yun. If you want to invest in stocks, just get a low-cost index fund. It's the second best thing to investing in the stock market. Essentially, with a little money, it's like you've invested in the cross-section of all the best companies in the Philippines. So your risk goes down and your costs goes down as well. So that's another aspect. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Tabe. Actually, um, in the workplace, whenever someone says, I have extra income, uh, what mm -hmm. is your suggestion? Uh, usually, what, what people say is, ah, invest mo sa ganito, sa ganyan, but they don't really explain well. Uh, yeah. the, what, what are the possible options for those friends or um, colleagues who would want to, um, who would want to you know, promote a certain investment product? but they can't explain mm. what are the other what are the options for them okay you can so i'm thinking that in your workplace it's possible for some people to lose money just following somebody else's investment plan okay and that is the danger i know you meant well Deva, you meant well. Maybe you earned a lot from your past investment and you want your friend to also earn something. But if every investment plan should be different per person because the situation, let's say your friend has debts. So hindi pa siya dapat nag-i-invest, nag diba? Whatever, invest, uh, whatever investment idea that should be addressed or that should be uh, recommended to a person should be taken with all of the information at the back of your mind on the debt situation, the income situation, cash flow situation, all of these things have to be taken into consideration or else what is safe for you can be very risky for another person. Now, if you mean well but you cannot explain, make people read the books that I love. <laughs> Wala pa akong libro eh. Pag lumabas na yung libro, I'll let you guys know. But ask them to read The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. That's one of my favorite books. I'm rereading it again and I am still learning everything that I've already read before. Pero ngayon, mas maganda yung learning ko. Uh, you can read Common Stocks for Uncommon Profits by Phil Fisher. You can read Snowball by, uh, it's an autobiography of Warren Buffett. These things can help you gain knowledge na coming, na coming straight from the source. So you know that whatever it is that you can apply to your own situation comes directly from the authors of the book. Aside from that, Check out your financial beshi ng bayan. Message me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and I will try my best to answer your questions. Yes, I totally agree with you, Ma'am Salvin. First, aabangan namin yung book mo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Whatever it's out, please let us know. The second is that yung, yung one-size-fits-all mentality of financial planning would really tend to result in sisihan, Alam mo yun, kasi sabi mo, ganito mag-work yung investment firm, pero I lost, I lost money. So, that's also one danger actually. Eh. Um, going back to the, the the context of faculty members, mm -hmm. uh, have, one of the questions that is common sa aming pre-registration is that we, the, the teachers cannot make, cannot, sorry, cannot make, cannot make ends meet because yeah. of their, their salary, uh, maliit daw. So what are your suggestions, aside from investment, do they do business? Magpapayag sila sila, magpapautang na sila. Okay. Alam mo, kanina nga lang, I was just talking with another friend. Sabi niya, paano po magbabudget kung walang babudgetin? <laughs> and I realized that that's a very common problem for a lot of people. Now, we all know math, right? One plus one equals two. 
And really, this is just a simple equation. When you don't have enough, and you cannot you cannot budget it, you cannot subtract anymore, right? Hindi ka na makapag-budget. You cannot subtract anymore because what you have is just enough. The only thing that you can do is to add some more. And that means find some other ways of earning money. And there's nothing wrong with that so long as, let's say, if you're a school teacher, you're a college teacher, there's nothing wrong with that so long as it does not take away time and energy from your existing work. In, in Metro Manila, for instance, I see uh, before the pandemic, I go to Centris. So in Centris, it's a Sunday market. In the Sunday market, I see corporate type individuals. I see retired individuals. And you know what they do? They go to work from Monday to Friday. And on Saturdays, they prepare for Sunday market. They cook meals. They make falafel. I don't know. They make great, um, what do you call this? They make great paella. They make great, so many things. And it's so funny because when I buy from them, they're all, their accents are great. And that's because they work in the corporate sector, but they use their weekends to earn more money. So long as you're healthy and there's 24 hours in a day, there's always a way to make ends meet. Um, use your creativity. Look for, you could check out my YouTube channel. There was a, our latest episode is Saan Aabot Ang Separation Pay Mo? Because, you know, people lost, a lot of people lost their jobs and nanggigigil sila dun sa 1 million that they get. And I say, you know what? If your expenses are 50,000 a month, yung 1 million mo or 1.5 won't last you for two years. So you have to budget that. How do you do it? If you don't have enough money, you go into a business. What kind of business do you go into? Look for the intersect between what the world needs and what you can provide. It can't be what the world needs and you can't provide it because you lose money, you don't have the skills for it. If something that you can provide, but the world doesn't need it, it's just a hobby, and then you lose money again. So it has to be an intersect between the two. Let me get back to that very inspiring, sometimes college students that I see in centries or selling stuff on IG with a little inspiration, a little capital, and a little more grit and determination, yung kulang na budget, umaakit din. Basta willing tayo na magpagod. Kasi in the end, it's really all worth it. Yes. I agree with you, Ms. Tabe. Actually, when you mentioned earlier the set race, it brings me back to Salcedo Weekend Market as well in Makati before. When I was Salcedo? In yeah, Salcedo. Um, you will be able to meet a lot of people from all walks of life, selling and buying yeah. at the same time in one place. So it's very inspiring as well to see even mm -hmm. the well-off people, they still, you know, pursue their passion. They still sell. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's really not, the, the uh, sinasabi nga nila, um, there's no hustle, there's no shame in hustling. No shame at all. Yes. No shame at all. Um, being able to create something and make money out of the labors of your hands is something that you must be really proud of. Alam mo, when you're budgeting, di ba? Kunwari, ang nanay-tatay nagsisimula na mag-budget and then they realize they're short. Instead of doing away with your savings budget, kasi sabi ko kanina, di ba, dapat income minus savings. Eh pag short na, tanggalin yung savings. Hindi pwede. Ang gagawin mo, income minus savings, kung short, do some hustle on the side para you can still afford all your necessities. Don't give up. Laging may paraan. Kung gugustuhin, may paraan. Exactly, po. And I was able to watch some of your videos before. You said birthday parties are not emergencies. <laughs> Binyags are not emergencies. So, dapat hindi ko po nyo sa emergency or even sa savings. <laughs> dapat hindi ko nyo your means talaga po. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, Ms. Tabe, we have another question here from Facebook from Ms. Lenita Sanchez. If I would be retiring next year, what possible investment would uh, you advise us? Uh, is buying a condominium a good investment? 
Right. So retiring, kunwari, that that would mean ba na you're 60 years old by next year or you're retiring early at 55? Don't forget that when you're retiring at 60, usually you still have 20 more years to live. <laughs> Nakakalimutan natin yung akala natin. Yung 1 to 3 million, enough na for retirement. Hindi po yun ang abot ng 20 years. Mas mauunang maubos yung pera for retirement than, than the years that you're going to live. So you have to make sure that if you're going to invest something, make sure that you will be able to live off on that investment. To be able to do that, look at the costs of each investment. If you like a condominium, and it's a, and, but if you're going to live in it, it's not an investment. Right, a property where you're the where you're the occupant, that's an expense. That's not an investment. It only becomes an investment when you are able to sell it, when you are able to um, rent it out, and that's how you start, sort of start earning lease income or rental income. That's the only time when it's an investment. Buy a condominium if you are if you enjoy taking care of properties. Kasi any property like a house or a condominium, it depreciates over time. So ang issue mo dito is you have to make sure that walang leakage, na it's well painted. If you're going to rent it out to someone, there's also the risk that the person who rents it from you will not be able to take care of the property. So there are inherent risks to a condominium investment. And, but if you feel that you're okay with that kind of risk, it's also a good investment for your future. But also realize that selling or liquidating a condominium investment cannot be done in six months, three months, or one month. So if you are a retiree, you turn 65 or 70, and you suddenly need money for your health needs, and you don't have liquidity, meaning wala kang pwedeng ma-withdraw from the bank or some other stock that you can sell immediately in the market. If you don't have that, you won't be able to sell your condo investment in three to six months. It's going to be very hard. So what am I saying? When you invest in a condominium, make sure that it's not your only investment. Make sure that your port total portfolio is a mix of easily liquefiable investments and things like a condominium or a house or a property that you can sell at a good price over time. There's also tax implications there. Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Abe, for answering that question. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, we have to cut short the Q&A portion. I know our viewers, have, even I, have a lot of questions for you, but uh, we have to cut it short since it's almost three o'clock. Um, once again, thank you, Ms. Alde, for accepting our invitation to be our resource speaker for this afternoon's webinar. I'm sure a lot, uh, a lot, our viewers have learned a lot from you this afternoon. <laughs> uh, do you have any parting words for our audience? I have had a great time with you today, and I'm just, I cannot see your faces, but I'm imagining those of you out there who are listening to this webinar, I hope that I have reached some place in your heart, not just in your mind, but some part of your heart that tomorrow will change some way that you're going to live your life. Uh, for me, we have to move from knowing to doing. That's the only way to really take advantage of all the knowledge that we're getting. I promise you that all the efforts you're going to put into uh, fixing your financial life, whether the goal is to create a life with no debt or whether the goal is to set aside 25 pesos per day for an emergency fund, I promise you that all of these will pay off. Money is never, again, the most important thing, but we are able to be more we are able to be a better version of ourselves when we face our spouses, our children, mm -hmm. the students that we teach, the people who work in our institutions. We are able to be a better version of ourselves when there are no money problems hanging over our heads. So I want you all to live a good life. Be happy. Be safe. Always wear your mask. 
and never forget to wash your hands. So thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you very much, Ms. Salve, for, for being with us this afternoon. All right, so that ends our webinar for this afternoon. Just a synthesis for what transpired this afternoon, Ms. Salve has discussed the importance of uh, what, what we should identify first, what are the most important things in our life for us to proceed with uh, setting financial goals. We also have to consider the, the formula that she has given, income minus savings equals to the expenses. Uh, that's the amount of money that we have to live in for us to achieve our financial goals. She also presented her debt payment push plan, which is I, I, I personally believe that it's very effective and would help us a lot in achieving our goals as well. Uh, she made mention of emer the importance of emergency funds and uh, giving a side note that Binya, birthdays, and other parties are not part of emergencies. Um, she also left us with a quote uh, saying, money is never the, emo the most important thing, but it makes us better. It gives us the power and the ability to do more things for other people as well, not only for us and our families. So uh, just a reminder for everyone who have uh, pre-registered, uh, you will be receiving uh, the link uh, the feedback link for this webinar uh, within an hour after this uh, this show and you have until Monday at 5 p.m. to accomplish the form. Once you have already accomplished it, the electronic copy of your certificate will be sent to you via email. So that ends our webinar for this afternoon. On behalf of um, the CHED chairperson, uh, Prospero de Vera III, and the HECBOL project director, uh, direct Dr. Nadia A. Alibin, on behalf of the Hackball Project, we wish you a very good day and take care.